Hi, my name's May for SoapEquipment.com. Today we'll be demonstrating large production cold process soap making from start to finish. We will be utilizing a professional, custom designed, full production, air powered soap cutting system. Our equipment list includes the air soap cutter, air cutter mold, hoist system, pot tipper, pot whipper, mighty mixer, oil wax melter, lie tank, tank jackets, melter and light tank scales, floor scale, miscellaneous accessories, and safety equipment. We use the following accessories. Stainless steel pitcher, stainless steel paddles, three-step rolling platform, stainless steel work table, timers, spatulas, scraper, bench brush, squeegee, thermometers, and scales. Safety equipment used nitrile gloves, face shield, and a lab coat. The ingredients used are olive oil, palm oil, coconut oil, vegetable oil, lye, essential oils, and water. We have blended, pre-measured, and preheated our oils and lye water solution for time purposes. The equipment used in this video is available at SoapEquipment.com, developing creative solutions for the handcrafted industry. Now let's get started. First we'll describe some of the equipment and accessories that we will be utilizing throughout this video. Let's start with showing how easily the stand can be height adjusted and anchored to the floor. We recommend using a timer so that your oils and lye solution are ready to use when you are. This stand is designed specifically for your oil wax melter and lye tanks. Note the heavy duty steel construction and tough baked on powder coating. This is the perfect scale for measuring all your large batch oils which includes a large digital display with swivel mount. Both tanks are covered with insulation jackets, which cuts energy usage. This is a stainless steel paddle for stirring your oils and lye. The ball valve makes for easy dispensing of your oils. Please be sure to use safety equipment, such as gloves, face shield, and respirator when working with your lye solution. The easily adjustable thermostat is included on both the lye tank and the oil wax melter tank. This is the easy way floor scale with ramp. The digital display swivels for easy reading when filling your pot tipper. As you can see, we've used the tank scale, insulated jacket, and timer on the lie tank as well. The stainless steel table is used for numerous things throughout this video. This is the ProMold release paper and cutter. Note the Willow Way Soper Scale and Stainless Steel Pitcher for easily measuring your essential oils. This is the Pot Whipper we'll be using as our second method of mixing later in the video. Now we're going to stir our oils using the stainless steel paddle. You'll want to do this before taking the temperature to get a more accurate reading. Now I'm taking the temperature using the just point infrared thermometer. We're getting ready to stir our lye water solution, so it's time to put on our protective equipment, the face shield, nitrile gloves, and lab coat. Moving the rolling platform to the lye tank, it's time to stir the lye water solution. Once again, using a stainless steel paddle, carefully stir the lye water solution. It's time to roll the pot tipper onto the floor scale. Align it under the ball valve of the oil wax melter. Since accuracy of measurements in soap making is so important, make sure to zero out the scale so that the display will only reflect the weight of the oils. Simply turn the lever on the ball valve to dispense the oils into the pot tipper watching your scale closely. Roll the pot tipper off the scale and turn it around to roll it back onto the scale. Align it with the ball valve of the lye tank so that you can dispense your lye water solution. Be sure to zero out the scale again. Dispense about a quart of the lye water solution into a stainless steel pitcher.
You'll set this aside to use at a later time. Watch the scale closely as you measure out the lye water solution. Since once this is measured into the oils, you cannot remove any excess. Now we will use the lye water solution that was set aside to the exact amount needed for your recipe. Once again, watch the scale closely. Now we're ready to mix. We will be demonstrating two different mixing methods, the Mighty Mixer and the Pot Whipper. The first method we'll be demonstrating is mixing with the Mighty Mixer. Roll the pot tipper up to the Mighty Mixer and carefully align your mixing blade as you lower it into the pot. Today we'll be using the Pot Whipper blade. You'll want to adjust the variable speed control gradually to get to your desired mixing speed. As you can see, the Mighty Mixer will thoroughly mix your recipe with no effort. Now I'm using the pot whipper attached to a contractor's grade 5 amp drill to continue mixing. Once again, start slow and work up to speed. Hold the drill at a 10 to 15 degree angle to get the best mixing action. Once you've reached traced, you'll be ready to add your essential oils. Great, it looks like we've reached trace and it's time to add our essential oils. Pour the essential oils in using a back and forth motion for better blending. Remember to mix in thoroughly, but be careful not to over mix. Next we'll pour the soap into our mold that has been previously oiled, lined, and placed on a dolly. As you roll the mold into place, begin tilting the pot tipper. Once the mold is in the correct position, begin pouring the soap into the mold. As you pour, hold the stainless steel paddle under the stream, reducing the speed of fall and also fanning it out. This will help to prevent bubbles and air pockets. When most of the soap has been poured into the mold, tilt the pot tipper back up slightly. Then clean your stainless steel paddle with a rubber spatula. Then tilt the pot tipper once again and use a rubber spatula to remove the remainder of the soap from the pot. You can then use a squeegee to clean all of the soap from the sides and the bottom of the pot tipper. If poured at a very thick trace like this, you can use a plastic putty knife to smooth and level the top of the soap. If you poured a medium trace, you can usually just jiggle the mold to level the soap out. Now we need to cover the mold to continue the saponification process. We're using the Pro Mold cover that can be easily placed around the mold and secured with Velcro. Then we'll cover it with the sturdy lid. Our soap is now ready to cure. Curing times vary according to your recipe, mold size, and type of cover used. Now our soap is ready to unwrap and demold. Let me take this time to tell you not to be intimidated by the size of this equipment, especially the air soap cutter as I am barely five foot tall. Carefully remove your pull mold cover and then roll up and secure with a rubber band. You can place this inside the lid for easy storage so it's readily available. To move the air cutter table back to the forward position, start by moving the cutting frame to the up position. Move the main valve lever back and then remove the locking pins.
pull the table toward you and then replace the locking pins in this new position. Now it's time to connect the mold to the hoist. This is something that you will want to practice in advance before attaching it to a mold filled with soap. But once again, do not be intimidated by this. As you will see, I can easily move a block of soap that weighs more than me with very little effort. Once the mold is connected to the hoist with the lanyards, begin to raise it up off the floor just enough to remove the dolly and the bottom of the pro mold cover. The mold dolly is an essential part of the mold. Because the mold bottom is grooved, the mold dolly supports the bottom and helps keep it flat and level. Then continue to raise until the bottom of your mold is just above the height of the table. You'll then guide the mold back into place on the table with one hand as you continue to slowly lower with the other. Align with the guide pins on the cutting table. Now lower the hoist and remove the lanyards. We're now ready to demold. Remove the wing nuts and remove all four rods. Then remove the sides by gently tapping with a rubber mallet, making sure you have a firm grip on the mold panel. You'll want to remove each panel and set aside for cleaning and reassembly. Slowly remove the liner paper from your block of soap. By doing this slowly, all of the liner paper will come off in one piece. Then position your stainless steel work tables and drying trays so that they will be close at hand. Now you're ready to remove the locking pins once again and roll the table back under the cutting frame. Lock the pins back into place and pull the main lever control back down to turn the air on. Pump the lever down in short bursts to position the cutting frame on top of the block of soap. Once the wires are touching the soap, you're now ready to cut the block into loaves in one smooth cut. Leaving the cutting frame in the down position, remove the loaves one at a time and place onto your drying trays. When you plan to do several cuts in one day, you'll cut all of your loaves first. Once they have skimmed over, you'll then cut all of your bars. Continue to remove the loaves as we prepare to cut into bars. Look at all these loaves we've cut in just a short time. Our loaves are all cut and skimmed over. Now it's time to change the cutting frame so that we can cut our loaves into bars. Raise the loaf cutting frame back to the top. Now remove the bottom of the mold. Then place the bar cutting table onto the rolling table. You will place the bar cutting frame on top of this. Bring the loaf cutting frame down in short bursts until it rests slightly above the bar cutting frame. Using the Allen wrench provided, remove the bolts from the brackets.
Now slide out the loaf cutting frame. Lower the brackets back down to the bar cutting frame and replace the bolts. Be sure to tighten these bolts well as this will help keep your frame traveling evenly. Raise the cutting frame back to the top to prepare for placement of the cut loaves. Align each loaf flush with the back of the cutting tray and place along the groove so that you will get just a little bit of trim on each side. This is also the chance to align them so that you can even up any inconsistencies. Continue placing the loaves onto the cutting table until you have completed the first layer. When you have finished the first row, lower the cutting frame to make sure your alignment is correct. Then raise the cutting frame back up and then continue stacking the loaves. You can stack the loaves up to a couple inches from the cutting frame. Lower the cutting frame back down in short bursts again until the wires rest on the top of the soap. Then ease the cutting frame through the first layer of loaves and slightly into the next row. Yep. Remove the bars and position on your drying tray. Separate the bars about an eighth of an inch to assure more consistent drying of the soap. Continue cutting until all the loaves are cut into bars. In no time at all you have several hundred bars of beautiful soap. Thank you for watching our demonstration of large production cold process soap making. Now remember, the equipment used in this video is available at SoapEquipment.com, developing creative solutions for the handcrafted industry. We hope you'll join us as we continue on, showing a brief demonstration on equipment cleanup, mold reassembly, and equipment maintenance. Let's start by showing you how to clean and reassemble your mold. Cleaning your mold is easy. Simply use a plastic putty knife to remove any leftover soap and wipe with paper towels. To reassemble, start by laying one of your sides groove side up. Insert the bottom piece into the groove and then the two short sides using a rubber mallet to tap into place. Place the last side into the grooves and tap into place. To finish, replace the rods and hand tighten the wing nuts. It's very important to not over tighten the wing nuts. Now continue inserting the remaining rods and hand tighten. Cleaning the pot tipper is very simple since almost all the soap was removed with the rubber spatula and squeegee. For any leftover soap, just wipe clean with the paper towel. To clean the air cutter, brush off the wires and cutting table to remove any debris. Take special care in brushing the wires. Connect your air hose to the air regulator. Airflow and speed may be adjusted at the needle valve. Pull up and turn. The airflow comes preset. The main valve lever control turns the air on and off. Grease the air cylinder rods lightly and put a few drops of mineral oil on the linear bearings once every few weeks under heavy use. Occasionally make a visual check for water in the bowl of the air regulator. 
If you see any, turn the little knob on the bottom of the bowl counterclockwise to blow the water out and back the other way to close off the air. Again, thank you for watching. This equipment is available at SoapEquipment.com.